Guys, I'm super excited for today's video. We're doing things a little bit differently today. I'm actually on my way to Treehouse Brewing Company right now in Charlton, Mass. Um, and we are gonna go make some content with them. There was a video that Treehouse put out on their YouTube channel asking home brewers to send them um, basically their own beer for evaluation and tasting on an actual YouTube video. I put my hat in the ring, but I actually used my real name and just like my personal info, not the apartment brewer stuff. So I don't think there was any sway in picking me, but they picked me and the English IPA that I just made to, uh, to be tasted on this video, which is pretty crazy considering that was about 500 or so people from around the globe. But anyway, as part of that video, everyone who was selected had to basically make a little bit of an intro video about themselves and about the beer that they were submitting. So when I made mine and submitted it, they were like, oh wait, we know that guy. So basically I got a call from the production guy at Treehouse, Michael, and he said, instead of shipping your beer to Treehouse, why don't you just hand deliver it and we'll include you in the tasting video, which is just awesome. So I am super pumped to be uh, going at the Treehouse now. Not only am I gonna be tasting all the other beers that got submitted to them uh, and then having my own beer evaluated in person by Nate, but I'm gonna meet Nate. I'm gonna talk brewing with him. Uh, we're gonna get a behind the scenes at Treehouse. I'm gonna be able to see how their production works, how the brewery looks uh, from my perspective and just kind of a, a lot of cool stuff Stuff that you would not otherwise see from YouTube. If you don't follow their channel already, I really do recommend you check them out. I really don't think I have to explain how big of a deal Treehouse is in the craft beer world. So uh, being able to actually go there in person as a lowly home brewer is pretty freaking wild. I'm really excited to talk brewing with Nate. I wanna know what his thoughts are on my English IPA. If you watch the video on that beer, you know I was not super happy with it. It was not the best I could do. Um, and it was a little bit out of balance. So I'm curious to find out what he thinks he could do to make it better, uh, and if that lines up with any of my thoughts. Also, I'm not confident in the packaging on this one. Uh, canning this beer off of a keg that has been hooked up to a beer engine is pretty much guaranteed to deliver some sort of oxidation. So I'm pretty sure that that's gonna be the case. Regardless though, it should be a really fun opportunity. I'm definitely gonna talk brewing stuff with Nate as much as possible. I hope to learn a lot today. Anyway, it's about an hour drive to get to Charlton, so I'll catch up to you guys when we get there.
right, so I made it. Here we are. This is the uh, the same spot you see a lot of the videos that uh, that Nate shoots here. So I'm gonna get a little bit of a tour here from Alex, who's one of the guys who works here in the production side. So I'm super excited, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. How's it going, man? Welcome to Treehouse. Thank you. I'm actually gonna cut right over the mash truck. All righty. I'm voicing over this section because it was a pretty loud environment overall. The brewery is obviously a pretty loud place with pumps running and uh, kettles operating and steam coming out of things and it, just a lot of things going on at the same time that are pretty loud so it was just kind of tough to get good clear audio in this place. Alex showed me around the brew deck and explained that he was actually mashing out a uh, batch of neutral grain spirit sending it over to one of the lauder tons. It was actually really exciting because I got a chance to see into a 60 barrel kettle, um, which honestly felt like I was looking off the edge of a building. It was kind of insane how large this equipment is, and that's a constant theme throughout the rest of this tour. Uh, the scale at which Treehouse operates is truly mind boggling, especially for a home brewer. <laughs> 60 barrel PEA brew house. Yeah. Uh, super efficient and easy to work on. You guys need anybody to clean that out, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the CIP on the brew house is the easiest part of reckoning here. We yep. literally just click a bar that says right there, yeah. on CIP on the computer in the brew <laughs> office and it just goes through the whole thing. So how much is left over after that? Um, it's pristine. The brew deck is awesome. The GEA systems are beautiful and uh, just really tremendous uh, equipment to be using. How long does your lauder take? How long does it take louder? Um, it depends on the batch. How big the beer is. The small beer is try to get by. You can louder the whole batch is probably This is awesome. I mean, coming from the five gallon scale, and anytime you step into any brewery, of course, it's going to be kind of like a wow, this is so much bigger. But here on the 60 barrel scale, it's kind of insane. I mean, looking around at having six vessels here, seven vessels, seven vessels here, yeah, it's just pretty crazy. So, um, I mean, just looking inside and seeing this water happening as it goes through. We don't, I don't water because I just pulled the basket out of the, yeah. you know, the grain. They'll give you kind of like a scope of oh. how big the 60 barrel batch is on an empty Yeah, tank. that's like looking down like a, at least two stories almost. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy in there. This thing rips. Boils pretty <laughs> hard. I was able to see how they simultaneously were finishing up the mash and the water on one batch and uh, finishing up the boil on a prior batch. So the process was very smooth and clean. How long have you been here for? I've been here for about three and a half years. Yeah. I came from a 20 barrel brew house, which is pretty sizable. But to see this place after that was uh, <laughs> pretty impressive. Yeah, it's insane. After exploring the brew deck, they took me up on the catwalk around all the fermenters. This was awesome because not only were you several stories in the air and still on top of these fermenters, but also you could see the rest of the brewery from that space. It's kind of a bird's eye view, which was pretty awesome. There's a tremendous amount of fermentation going on all at the same time and uh, just a, a real impressive scale to the process once again. Sort of a dead end down here. It's <laughs> just insane. It just keeps going. Yeah, it just keeps going. <laughs> um, Even from this angle, it felt like we passed hundreds of fermenters, but they were still a lot more even further on down the brewery to include the horizontal lagering tanks and some fooders as well. So how do you how do you guys manage that? Like all the chaos of having to choose which goats to wear? And, and... Um, we do have a cellar manager yeah. and we have a lot of talented folks down there that are good at paying attention, but we have some software that kind of helps us out. Okay. Track what's in what tank. Yeah, that helps. Uh, but yeah, it can get pretty confusing real yeah. quick. I mean, you got a lot of different sizes too, so. Right. Yeah. yeah but it gives us a lot of flexibility if we want to do single batches, cell batches, triple batches, yeah. one batches. Okay. It's a lot of flexibility. That's true. That on purpose. This is our bottling line. Kind of oh, yeah. like most of our stouts and barley wines. Sometimes we'll do some lagers like pizza pills in the bottle from time to time. Yeah. We've got some small batch bright tanks over here that's mainly used by our barrel program. And then, of course, directly across right here, this is our canning machine. That canning machine has the capability of doing uh, nitrogen as well, which we just incorporated recently. So we okay. do like Oh Danny Boy, our dry Irish stout and nitro. After talking a little bit about dry hopping, we moved past the catwalk area down below the brew deck to go check out the heat exchanger, uh, as well as the mill and the hot and cold water mixer. It's a lot of hops at one time. Yeah. We dry hop anywhere between like three and like 18 pounds per barrel. I don't think I've heard 18 ever. I know, it's hilarious. 18, but 18 includes like cryo and hop extracts. Yeah, well. yeah okay. So it's not legitimately 18 pounds per okay. barrel, but it's, it approaches that. 
if we were milling in, I'd show you over here. This over here is our Millstar hopper. Well, yeah, I'll show you okay. Right here. Yeah. So, all the grain's just there until we hit go. And what happens is the grain will drop into the scooping chamber and get hit with water. And then it will just fall right through these rollers. There's two of them, one here and on the other side that crushes it. Um, it gets hydrated at the same time. And pretty simple, it just pumps it right over into the mash tun from the bottom. Yeah. And it's got this giant agitator blade in there which just kind of yeah. keeps the mash homogenous yeah. and rotating. So this is just a hot water mixing station for our hot cold liquor tanks. Okay. So you can have any specific temperature you want at any given time sent to anywhere in the brewery <laughs> with like extreme precision. That's amazing. So that's uh, super handy to have as a brewer. Uh, moving past this section, though, we got one of the coolest views in the entire brewery, which is looking down the line of the 240 barrel fermenters uh, that sit closest to the tap room. It was really just an awesome view and gives you a tremendous sense of scale. These fermenters are just absolutely enormous, and you feel very small as an individual when you're walking past one of these monsters. What was really cool as we walked by these fermenters, though, is that I was able to see little elements of Treehouse doing Treehouse things. So, for example, walking past this photography studio and the photographer was, you know, heavily involved in a shoot on a particular can for some social media. This is also where we walked past Michael's office, where he works on the videos for the YouTube channel. And then also passed by the um, maintenance area where there's a really large shop involved and uh, some pretty cool stuff set up there so that they can do some of the magic that they do, uh, keeping the brewery running. See, five hundred barrel bright tank. Good lord. Which, <laughs> even for me to this day, still blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the size of a freaking building, man. Yeah. After that, we walked past the uh, canning line area. That's cool. I, I watched all the videos that you guys made like last year when you're like, this is how we do this. This is how we do, you know, our packaging our and all that. And it's crazy seeing it in person because it's yeah. way, bigger scale than it looks on camera, if that makes sense. But um, this was one of the coolest things too, just the way it handles all it, everything being automated. From there though, we actually headed down to one of my favorite parts that I did not anticipate enjoying as much as I did, and that was the actual warehouse. So this is where the coffee roastery and the distillery all sit. What's really cool down here though is the seemingly endless stacks of cans. The scale of this warehouse is kind of insane. It feels a little bit like you're walking into a Home Depot, except that you could fit multiple Home Depots inside of this warehouse. It honestly felt like the warehouse had everything in it uh, that you could possibly need and plenty of it as well. After this though, it was time for us to head to the filming studio to actually start doing the tasting video for the homebrews uh, that people had sent in. This is actually an off-site location and it was pretty cool to see how they had it set up. It's a beautiful indoor space, cabin-like environment. The brew magic system that Treehouse started on is sitting in there as a background prop, um, but it was really just cool to see that in person and then also just to to marvel at the setup involved in the production side of their content. They're actually running a three camera setup which includes a cinema camera on a track. Uh, so they are not messing around when it comes to production. Filming this short video actually took us several hours. There's a lot that goes into setting up the production on this scale. Setting up your levels and your shots to make sure everything looks okay and your lighting and, and all that is one thing but running a three camera setup on a professional scale like this is a whole other thing. There's a lot that goes into the preparation of making even a shorter YouTube video. This is really fun though because it's always great to see things behind the scenes and to see kind of just like what makes the cuts and what doesn't make the cuts. Uh, we had a lot of fun with this video and um, I actually really enjoyed being able to taste the beers after Nate had actually gone through and done his tasting notes. So for those of you homebrewers who watched their video, submitted beer, and also happened to watch mine, great job everybody. Even though Nate said that his favorite was the Hellas, I think my personal favorite was actually the Baltic Porter with a little hint of smoke in it. Um, I really enjoyed drinking that beer. Luckily for me and for you, after we'd finished our initial shoot with the homebrew tasting, Nate had a few minutes to actually answer some questions that I'd prepared for him. I did not expect that I would get this opportunity, so I'm very grateful I have the chance to do it. Also, thanks again to Michael for actually doing the hard work on this one, editing the whole thing, and then just sending me the finished product. That saves me a ton of time, and you get to appreciate the skills that he has on my channel. Thank you for just taking a, bit, a little bit of time out of your schedule. I, I know it's busy, but I really appreciate uh, you having a chance to sit down with me and answer a few questions. The first question I have for you is, is it a cold IPA or an IPL? 
Uh, it's an IPL, I think. All right. Yeah, I, I, so I don't know too much about, well, I do, but I don't think too much about nomenclature. I don't get particularly hung up. And, uh, you know, it was an IPL thanks to Jack's Abbey before it was a cold IPA. And sometimes craft beer needs nomenclatures to help amplify things. And I guess my answer is I don't particularly care, <laughs> but if I had to answer it, it's an IPL. Yeah. Okay. When you started, what was going through your head? What made you start Treehouse or the concept that became Treehouse? And how did you run with that? This might sound presumptuous, but the, the brewery that Treehouse is now is the brewery that it was when it started. I think the concept, the idea of it was always larger than life. It just took us some time to get there. The concept of Treehouse was that great beer can provide opportunities to make amazing memories and amplify them. So some of my best memories come from, you know, running up Camel's Hump after visiting the cannery at The Alchemist and drinking that heady topper. The way that that beer tasted in that moment amplified that moment and made it more special to me. So the power of having those moments is what drove the impetus to create Treehouse. And, you know, Treehouse is more a hospitality business mm -hmm. than a brewery. From day one, we've thought of Treehouse as an experience and not necessarily as a place that people go to get beer. And I think that's really helped us. Um, what was the question? <laughs> um, I was just asking what was going through your head when you first started it. Nothing. You know, it's that, it's yeah. blind, blind passion and ambition. And yeah. I have no idea. We were just, we just go for it. It's we're still blur. going for it. And there's no grand plan and there's no master plan and there's no outcome other than making things that we can be proud of and providing experiences to people that they can value. How do you approach when you design a beer? Can you walk me through the process of what goes through your head when you have an idea for a new beer? What do you build it around? It depends. We chase, we chase flavor profiles. So sometimes in our curiosity series, for example, we'll find, we'll use a new hop like Rakao from New Zealand and we'll get this like crazy tropical fruit thing and then we'll chase it. So we'll say, okay, how can we isolate that and amplify it? And that just comes from experience. Sometimes using specialty malts, which I think are kind of out of vogue in the hazy IPA realm. I don't pay too much attention, but in the good old days, having a beer that was orange was acceptable. <laughs> and now today I see things that are yellow everywhere. And I'm like, why is everybody trying to do the same thing? Hmm. But we just, we, we're inspired from all around the world with traditional breweries and brand new breweries with whatever they're doing. Uh, and we get inspired like anybody else. So we find a flavor or a profile that we like, and then we run after it with reckless abandon. And we've set the brewery up to give us full utility to do so yeah. and spent time and energy and resources to just make it so that when we have an idea, you saw it today, it's a boundless playground. When we have an idea, we just go for it. That's amazing. So, Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Once everything was all finished, I headed back over to the tap room to have a couple beers, inspired actually by some of the homebrew submissions that were uh, given to us. The first one I had was a smoked Hellas called Little Fire Oak, and it was a real treat. It was super easy to drink. The smoke character was not as intense as other smoked beers, so it was actually really well balanced overall, had a nice floral note on the end, and still had all the elements of a great Hellas on, an, on top of it. It was a very, very pleasant beer to drink, and it was made easy even better by coming out of a side pole faucet. Once I finished that beer, I headed on over to the Ale Bar. And from the Ale Bar, I ordered a New Zealand pale ale called Happy Feeling Peach. Happy Feeling Peach is a hazy pale ale that's made with Rakao and Nelson Sovin hops and was honestly one of my favorite hazy beers that I've had in recent memory. It's a beer that really illustrates exactly what Nate meant when he said they chase flavor profiles when they're making their beers. This one, told you it was going to be like a peach and it delivers uh, really nice pleasant balanced sweetness and a very soft soft feeling uh, beer which was just super super delicious and as one does at treehouse as I was finishing my second beer I placed an order for a large number of cans uh, walked on over to the can pickup area and picked up my wares to take with me back home Steven? yep I enjoyed a moment with the sunset walking out of the brewery, took my cans, put them in the trunk, and headed on home. So now it's time to wrap things up. I'm back now. I walked out of the brewery with 
a lot of beer, um, and I'm really happy I did too, because it's really cool tasting that beer in the context of the discussion that I had with Nate. When you taste a beer, especially one like Happy Feeling Peach, and you think about what he meant by chasing a flavor profile, locking onto that peach idea, and then running with it. That just totally changes the uh, way you appreciate the beer. It totally changes it from just being a generically great beer to something so much more. And I really enjoyed knowing that. And also just being able to sit down and take a uh, second to enjoy the tap room at Charlton in your own way, in the environment around the beer that Nate is talking about as well. I had the option to sit by myself and watch the brew deck uh, do their operations. If I wanted to, I could have sat in a quiet, cozy corner, or I could have sat on any number of beer garden style tables, picnic tables, with lots of people and be very social. I could sit at the bar if I wanted to. I could have also sat outside in a heated tent, or I could have sat on a lawn chair and watched the sunset. Like, there's a lot of different ways that I could have enjoyed uh, that beer if I wanted to. And it's really cool because that means something different for each individual person. I really enjoyed my tour of the brewery. The scale of things there is just absolutely insane. It looks huge on video, but trust me, when you go in person, it's just even crazier. Um, and it makes my five gallon uh, homebrew scale look like literally Really just a drop in the bucket. It was a lot of fun not only being able to have my own beer tasted and analyzed by Nate, but also you know being able to taste the other great homebrews that got sent in to, for this project and kind of compare my tasting notes with what he picked up on. And that was really enjoyable. And then just being able to see the behind the scenes, the process for how that YouTube channel works, for how they run their operations, it just was really, really awesome. Um, and of course, anytime I get a chance to sit down with someone like Nate and of that level Level of passion and intelligence for beer, uh, it's definitely worth the time. So I really enjoyed that conversation that I had with him as well. I learned a ton and I think I'm gonna take some things away from this uh, that are gonna influence how I approach designing beers now. Uh, so some things have certainly changed in that regard as well. And specifically, thank you very much to Nate, to Michael and to Alex for taking time out of your busy schedules to accommodate me. I can see how busy you guys are and how hard you're working, so it means a lot to me that you accommodated me in that way, and I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to Treehouse's YouTube channel yet, please go ahead, do yourself a favor, and subscribe to them. They have some phenomenal content that comes out. What they're doing on the production side is incredible, so not only is the content great, but visually it's amazing as well. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel as well if you haven't already. Comment down below with your thoughts on everything. If you want to support my channel, please consider picking up a t-shirt or something like that in the merchandise store. If you want to support Treehouse's channel, please consider picking up merchandise from their store. But I also have a Patreon, and my Patreon supporters are key in helping me upgrade the production quality of my channel. Maybe one day I'll get to the level of Treehouse through enough Patreon support, but we'll see. <laughs> Otherwise, though, if that's not your thing, I also have a uh, channel memberships option, and there's the super thanks button. Either of those things really help me out quite a bit as well. There's also an Amazon store I have in the description box where you can find all of my channel production equipment there, as well as a lot of brewing equipment that's available on Amazon and that I regularly use. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on social media as The Apartment Brewer on both Instagram and Facebook. So check those links out if you want some more frequent content and uh, some different stuff that comes through the pipeline. And last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. Uh, these things take a while to produce, and especially with the collaboration, there's a lot of coordination that's involved in that one, so this one took a little while to make as well. Anyway, guys, I'm going to take some time to crack into this Pivo Groziski um, that I'm really excited for, and I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, this one goes out to you. Cheers. That is awesome.